Ever felt adrift in the digital world seeking connection? Introducing Dowagram, a sanctuary nurturing hearts, minds and spirits. Crafted for our cherished Ummah, guided by Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him's wisdom, none of you will have faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. A haven of unity and resilience amidst modern challenges. Dowagram, your beacon of togetherness. Explore locations, events, courses and education, all fostering growth. Join us. Let's unite and strengthen our path. All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, we have new headphones on my bold, shiny head here. And on that note, no, this is not the Nur. This here is just the Thai sun blasting in my face through my window whilst recording those videos. Guys, today we're going to return to the topic of Christianity. And on that note, no, I'm not doing this to ridicule Christianity. I'm not making this to make fun of Christianity. Quite the opposite, I'm keeping an open mind throughout my journey here on YouTube and I always will give people the benefit of the doubt because, hey, maybe I misunderstood something and this is why today we're going to check out Christianity for Beginners by the channel Redeemed Zoomer. On the thumbnail you can see Christianity explained logically. And this is really what it boils down to, because if you look into the theology of Christianity and you look into the doctrine of the Trinity, of course you find a logical problem at hand. It is what it is. If you're not a Christian yourself, or moreover, if you have never heard of the Trinity, the Trinity is extremely illogical. Because according to the rules of logic, three cannot be one. No matter what the Trinitarians claim, three cannot be one. The example that Trinitarians like to give you is, we are a trinity of sorts. We are body, we are mind, we are soul. Or others say, yes, but you are a trinity too, because you are a father, but you are a son as well, and you are a brother. So this makes you a trinity after all. All of this is anthropomorphism. All of this does not apply to God. We are human after all. And even if we grant this example and we say, you know what, it's actually true. I am a brother, I'm a father, I'm a son. So yeah, I see your point. No, it does not apply to the Trinitarian worldview according to Christianity. Because in Christianity you have three distinct persons. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. This is the doctrine, but all of them are God. However, if we take my example yet again, we say, Bobby is the Father, Bobby is the Son. Don't you see, this cannot be applied to the Trinity, because in a human context, yes, all of those titles imply me. I myself am those things. However, in Christianity, that is not the case. There are three distinct persons. However, they are co-eternal. That, of course, cannot apply to a human context. Yet again, this is why this example is lacking. And moreover, if we take this human example, then it's crystal clear, of course, that the Father is prior to the Son. In Christianity, they have this little cheat code and they say the Father begets the Son eternally, forever. Forever the Son is begotten out of the Father. So as you can hear already, this is extremely confusing, of course, and goes against logic. This is what it is, and this is why I'm so excited today to see if the video can provide logical proof for Christianity. And now, guys, before we jump into the video, do me the favor, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below. And now, with no further ado, Let's have a look. What is Christianity? Some people think it's just about being a good person. Some people think it's about following a bunch of rules. And some people think it's just a cultural tradition. But none of these are true. Christianity is all about Jesus Christ, and everything else stems from that. The Bible is the book about Christ. Yes, I would absolutely agree with the video here. Christianity is all about Jesus. It is the religion about Jesus. However, the question becomes, and the question became for me before reverting to Islam, is it truly the religion of Jesus? And the answer to that was no. Jesus never preached a trinity. Moreover, he did not preach to the people to worship him. Jesus prayed to the Father and he taught the same thing to his disciples. It's actually quite interesting. When I used to look into Buddhism, I found a very, very similar pattern reading the Buddhist texts. You get the idea that Buddha is on his way. He becomes a teacher. However, after that, they create the religion of Buddhism. 
Buddha himself was against idols. He said that he does not want people to erect idols, statues, etc. But then they start erecting statues and idols of him. So the irony in this is hysterical, but once you see it, you cannot unsee it. The same thing that happened within Buddhism happened then in Christianity. Jesus Christ was a messenger of God. He was a teacher to his people, to Israel. However, then later on, people started worshipping him. And this is how it became Christianity. This is the main difference, of course, because Christians will say, ah, the Muslims, they are worshipping Muhammad. This is ridiculous. And moreover, you can already hear it in the title. Islam means submission to God. That's what Islam means. It's not called Muhammadanism or something on those lines. We worship God alone. And of course, we do believe that Jesus did exactly that and was teaching exactly that. Worship God alone. We can find proof of that in the Bible as well, where Jesus said the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So here it is blatantly obvious that Jesus is born into the Jewish tradition. This is why he is quoting the Torah. And what is he quoting? That God is one. This is of course part of the Shahada. La ilaha illallah. There is no God worthy of worship but God. This is what all the prophets had in in common. Of course, Jesus was spreading the same exact message. In Islam, we believe that the message of God is never changing, just like God is never changing, and therefore all the prophets were calling us to pure monotheism. However, within Christianity, as he said correctly, it is all about Jesus. Right. This Christ and everything else stems from that. The Bible is the book about Christ. The rules of Christianity are about being like that is Christ. Correct. The rituals of Christianity are about being united to Christ. The church is the kingdom of Christ here on earth, and heaven is just a participation in the eternal life of Christ, which he achieved by rising from the dead. Despite Orthodox or Catholic claim, we do not have any proof whatsoever that Jesus Christ actually established a church, a Catholic or an Orthodox church on that matter. Nothing like this was ever to be found, quite the opposite. Of course, we do know that Jesus Christ participated within the temple, within Jewish tradition. And moreover, he of course mentioned the rising of Christ and the defeat of death. This is already a principle that we cannot resonate with whatsoever. Because we believe, and Christians do believe that as well, that God is eternal, that God never dies. So therefore, if Christ rose from the dead, even if we assume this and we say, hey, this is legitimate, this is accurate, fine, this would not make him God. Because God never dies, he does not need to rise. But of course, the Christian will say, well, this was the sun rising, the father was in heaven, etc., etc., you name it, which yet again leads to a logical contradiction. But moreover, this is not really the argument here. For me personally, I just have to say that we believe in an eternal God that never dies. For us, there is nothing to celebrate. God lives on forever. He is the eternal one. He is always. So if Christianity is all about Jesus, then who is he? Jesus is the son of God, which makes him truly God. But he was also born to a human mother, which makes him truly human, just like the rest of us. Yes, yeah, so yet again, this is not logical whatsoever. So Jesus Christ is the son of God. Okay, if you believe in this concept, which we as Muslims do not, of course, fine, then he is the son of God. That would not make him God. If you look into Christianity, we find a lot of Greek philosophy, of course. We find those concepts. Even Plato talked of a trinity of sorts 300 or 400 years prior to Christianity. So those Greek philosophical concepts have been in the Roman Empire for ages prior to Christianity, prior to the invention, we claim, of course, of the Trinity. And now, if you talk about this Greek philosophical concept and you say, you know what, Zeus had a child, had a son, it was Hercules. Fine, okay, then you have a god that begets a son and you know the roles, you know the hierarchy. Zeus is higher than Hercules, that's what it is. At least this is somewhat logical within the pagan worldview. However, you claim Jesus is the son of God, which makes him automatically God. No, that doesn't make any sense. I have a son as well, that doesn't make him me. And then, yes, you say he was born out of Mary and this made him human. 
Yes, absolutely. It made him human. Why not just stop there? Full stop. Jesus Christ was born out of Mary. He was a human. He was a messenger of God. Very, very simple. No confusion whatsoever. Human and truly God, he's the only one who can bridge the gap between God and humanity. But if he's the son of God, then how is he also God? It's because God yeah. is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One being, one God, and three persons. Yes, exactly, and that's the issue here. But you know what? If you want to say, oh, well, why would I listen to you, man? You're just a guy on YouTube. You're absolutely right. Don't listen to me. Simply look into the early stages of Christianity. There was no mention of the Trinity. And then even if you look into the Christian councils, such as Nicaea, Chalcedon, and whatnot, you will see that there was a dispute about the Trinity. It was not crystal clear. So all of my issues with the Trinity here have been voiced before. I'm not the first human being sitting here on YouTube and having those issues. No, even church fathers had issues with this dogma. Doctrine. And later they became declared heretics, right? They've been kicked out of the church because they went against orthodoxy. However, there was no original orthodoxy in the beginning of Christianity. It was formulated over the years because people could not agree upon that. For a long time, it was crystal clear that the Father is higher than Jesus. That was at least, yet again, somewhat logical. But later on, they did not accept this any longer and they said the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son, they are all one. So none of my objections to the Trinity are exclusively mine. No, throughout the years, throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, people had an issue with this. And how could they not? Because it is not logical whatsoever. This is called the Trinity, which explains how Jesus can be God and also worship God. Yeah, a tri -unity. He worshiped God because all humans are made to worship God and he's the ideal human. He healed the sick, casted out demons, and helped the outcasts. Eventually people realized he was the Messiah, or the Christ, that the prophets predicted, and that he was some starting did, the kingdom of God. Not. But the religious leaders didn't like Jesus challenging their authority, and they wanted to kill him on a cross. Now Jesus could have stopped this, but he didn't, because he said it needed to happen. But why did Jesus have to die? You see, the world and everything God created is filled with evil which we deserve because we have all sided with evil. And this is where Islam and Christianity differ tremendously, because within Islam we do not have that concept that evil is some sort of eternal punishment for the sin of Adam. And now we are eternally sinful, and therefore we just have to punish ourselves, whip ourselves, our flesh is dirty, none of that stuff. In Islam we have good and evil, but good and evil exists as a test for us. This life is nothing but a test. There is no point in whining and crying about eternal sin. No, every single baby is born pure. It is born upon the fitra, the natural predisposition to worship God alone. This is what we believe. Every baby is born pure and then it falls into corruption, into sin, through parents, through the environment, just naturally. This is what happens. But we can always repent. However, yet again, good and evil does exist as a test for us. That is it. Jesus died as a sacrifice to pay the price for evil that is so that human our sacrifice. deaths yeah. can be forgiven and we can live in a redeemed creation forever. So okay. why did Jesus die? To sacrifice himself for others, even the people that hated him. Yeah, but that leads to another logical problem yet again, because Jesus sacrificed himself for us, even though we find in the Bible that human sacrifice stopped essentially with Abraham. But be that as it may, he sacrificed himself, he dies, but actually rises again. So what kind of sacrifice is this? Because he didn't truly die after all. It was some sort of deception. He was dead for three days, and then he rises yet again. So where is the true sacrifice here? But even if we say, hey, this is absolutely logical, I love this idea, let's adopt it, then we still have the issue, of course, that we do have sin. So if he died for our sins and we are now living in some sort of redeemed creation, why is there still sin? everywhere and even people that return to christ are born again even those people still sin how can this be but on the third day jesus rose from the dead triumphing over sin and evil so because jesus holds the whole world together the resurrection of christ will bring with it the resurrection of the entire world and that means anyone who is in christ will also be raised from the dead and have eternal life shortly after the resurrection jesus ascended into heaven why did he do that he ascended to his throne to rule over his kingdom because he wants to involve his people in the work of spreading the kingdom and redeeming the world in anticipation of when he's going to come back and finish the job. So how can people spread the kingdom? 
At Pentecost, Jesus... I live in Thailand, and watching this video truly makes me realize why Christianity has not spread here in Asia. You have some churches here and there, you have missionary work, and some people are inclined to accept Christianity due to financial benefits, but ultimately it did not spread through Asia. You do not really have Christianity in China, in Thailand, in Japan. The reason is because it does not sound attractive whatsoever. To be totally honest, it does not sound attractive whatsoever, and moreover, it sounds very irrational, very illogical. Any Westerner that encounters certain Asian religions thinks the same, to be honest. So when I talk to the Buddhists over here, they tell me that in the morning they take a little bit of rice, a little bit of soft drinks even, and they sacrifice it at the altar for their gods, for their ancestor spirits and what not. Me, as a Westerner, listening to this, this sounds irrational, ridiculous, I do not believe it. The same applies to the gods in Hinduism. I do not believe in Ganesha, the elephant head god. Sounds totally irrational, ridiculous, I do not believe in this. However, being born in a Christian environment, they tell you that God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day he needed rest, he needed to sleep, of course. This is weak and this does not befit God. This is absolutely irrational for a God that is transcendent of time. He is absolutely transcendent. Why would he create the world in six days? Why would it even need that long prior to the creation of time? And then ultimately he needs rest on the seventh day. Those are ridiculous concepts. And yet again, I'm saying this with all due respect. I don't try to offend you. But if we look into those scriptures, they simply do not make sense. And once you realize that, you start to see the same concept the same principle in all the religions. Man, when I was going to the Orthodox Church, I thought it's unique that we light candles. But then you come to Buddhist countries, to Hindu countries, and you see they're lighting candles as well. They're worshipping statues. And even if they say they do not worship those statues, it is the same act, praying towards that statue. It is always the same. Only Islam has the two principles of pure Tawhid and Shirk. Pure Tawhid, meaning that God is one and only one and nothing is to be attached to God, which then translates into Shirk, which means not attaching any partners to God. No saints, no deities, no idols, no statues, none of it. Only Islam has those principles and adheres to those principles. Any other religion is essentially the same. Christians do believe that Christianity is so unique because we have Jesus. The same can be said about any other religion, don't you see? The Buddhists have Buddha, the Hindus have Krishna and whatnot. There's always a guy that people start worshipping, directly or indirectly. It is only Islam that does not worship the Prophet, but worships God alone. So how can people spread the kingdom? At Pentecost, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to his people to empower them to build the church, which is the kingdom of God here on earth. So, so for anyone who has faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit unites them to Christ through the rituals of the church. So being a Christian is being a citizen of God's kingdom, and this involves helping the poor, resisting evil, and spreading the gospel. And we do this with the hope that all evil will be destroyed and all good things will be restored. So yeah, and 2,000 years later, you have more evil than ever before. If you want to become Christian, you first need to believe the good news. Then you need to go to church to participate in God's kingdom. And then you need to get baptized, if you've never been baptized before, to become a citizen of God's kingdom. And if you want to know more about Jesus, there's a whole book for that. Now, nobody ever... Yeah, I would actually encourage Christians to read the book of Jesus, the Bible, and not to read only the New Testament, but read the Old Testament and read it in its entirety. If you then can truly tell me that the Old Testament is all about Jesus, then you, of course, have yet again another logical problem. Because the God of the Old Testament is very, very different than the depiction of Jesus in the New Testament. However, Christians do believe that Jehovah is Jesus. But Jehovah tells his people to kill everybody Amalek, even the children, the babies. Jehovah tells the people to kill the homosexuals. So how can Jesus be this Jehovah? Of course, this is logically absolutely inconsistent. And guess what? Yet again, I'm not the first guy to critique this. Even the church fathers had issues with that. You said it was easy and you might even suffer for it, but so many people have found an everlasting hope in Christ that's greater than all the things of this world. Alright, this is it for today's video. Yet again, another attempt to find a logical explanation of Christianity, which ultimately has failed, of course. There was nothing 
logical about this video. It is quite amazing to see this once you find yourself in a certain belief system. You of course want to explain it rationally. But it is absolutely impossible to explain the Trinity, to explain Christianity even, as rational. There's so many logical contradictions within Christianity, aside from the Trinity, it's not even funny anymore. You have a God which is supposed to be eternal, supposed to be transcendent, but then out of a sudden this God becomes a human. But of course God is not a human and that is found within the Bible as well, but then you say he is fully human and fully God at the same time. Not 50-50, but 100% and 100%. Then you go on and you claim this God has to die now. He has to be sacrificed for our sins. But God cannot die. So therefore the human part of his has to die. Then the human part dies and then somehow this human part rises and returns after three days yet again. But this was only the sun part because God is eternal all the time. But they are the same after all. Don't you see this logical contradiction? I mean, I don't even have to ask you now. Anybody, anybody that is not a Christian is looking at this objectively, cannot find any logic whatsoever. Especially because you claim that every single person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are co-eternal, co-equal. Co-equal means same. That's literally what it means. Co-equal means the same. But if the Son can die in human form and the Father did not do that, with that alone the Son has more experience than the Father. Which yet again is another contradiction because God does not need any experience because God is complete. God is already perfect. He does not need a human experience to do anything. Which leads us to the whole sin part. Because if God really created us all in eternal sin and now he decides, you know what, I want to forgive those guys, then he can forgive us. That's all God needs to do. If he's truly all-powerful, eternal, he can just snap his metaphorical fingers and everything is forgiven. But no, God needs to come in human form, get sacrificed by the Romans, get killed by them, and then rise again from the ashes like a phoenix. And now everything is resolved, but people are sinning more than ever. The kingdom of God is on earth now, but however, now you see that we have even more sin than ever before, more evil than ever before. This is absolutely irrational, absolutely illogical. You cannot explain this congruently. And it was Albert Einstein that actually said, if you cannot explain it to a seven-year-old, girl you have no idea what you're talking about all right guys and this is it for today's video if you liked it leave it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work all right this is it as always may god bless you all much love and peace dowagram the world's first halal social media platform when you load into dowagram you are met with the home page the home page will be made up of posts that users have made within groups you have joined, so it is tailor-made to your interests. Our most popular group is our marriage group, where you can find a potential spouse. Dawagram has groups on cooking recipes, family, reading, nature, entrepreneurship, job opportunities, hadith and Quran, and the list goes on and on. Dawagram also offers a private group exclusively for sisters and a private group exclusively for brothers. Each user on Dawagram has their custom profile page that can be edited at any time. Users can add and message people that have accepted their friend requests. You also receive up-to-date notifications of when people who you follow post, when you are mentioned on a post, and when people like and comment on your post. On the sidebar, you have access to location groups, where you can join groups of locations you may reside in or locations you have an interest in. If you want to search or find members on Dawagram, you can do so with key filters. Finding a spouse online is also made easier on Dawagram. All you have to do is make a post within the Find a Spouse section, and, and potential long-term partners will reach out to you via DM. Dawagram also has live streams from various content creators. Businesses can also advertise on the platform under the Registered Vendors section. To join as an approved vendor, click on the page at the bottom of the side and follow through the instructions on the page, which show you how to get a verification badge on Dawagram, 
and also how to advertise your business. Our main mission is to create the best online community in the world for Muslims around the world. Join Dawah Graham today at www.dawahgram.com.